Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we have Helldivers 2 hottest new weapon, the Quasar Cannon. Oh my god! To cultured individuals, this will be renowned as the Queso Cannon, and after four stacking it against both factions on stream and completing a solo no death versus the automatons and terminus with it, alongside a bunch of different testing, I have a pretty good grasp on it. So we'll be breaking down the entire thing with some fun thematic builds to Excuse me. Super mega meta builds to go with it. <laughs> I call my builds and guides. They're always posted in my Discord first, and it's where I announce everything. So make sure you join or I'll steal your sunglasses. So all that stuff is linked down below for you already. And for now, we're lighting this off with the Queso Cannon Breakdown. It's the new support weapon that costs 7,500 requisition and does not take up a backpack slot. It has infinite ammo and is essentially a rechargeable energy rocket that has so much peen, even headshots turn into back shots. The total charge time is three seconds before you can shoot and resets if you let go. The total cool off time ends up being 10 seconds for a total of a 13 second refire time. This didn't change on a hot planet at all because it seems to be a cool down time rather than a true cool off time like all the other energy weapons. So I'm assuming this doesn't change on cold planets either, and you also can't break this heat sink like a normal energy weapon because of this. There also isn't any heat sink degradation after I did my 5s, 10, and 20 tests, but if you're curious about how the other energy weapons work and their heat sink degradation or how they work in different climates, this chart is still accurate this patch and the entire video breakdown is the first link in the description. Honestly, I spent close to 30-ish hours testing energy weapons last week and I almost threw up when I saw a new one, but thankfully the Queso Cannon doesn't have the same inconsistent issues that the other energy weapons do. The thing it did get from most of the energy weapons is that it's very quiet when it's crouched and it seems to have weird threat thresholds. The explosion does let you bait enemies over to where you want them, but can also aggro things to you because of the increased threat radiuses on the enemies and the explosion itself. So like a 50-50 on a stealth weapon, but I don't think this was meant to be as stealthy as it even is right now. And of course, it can blow up container doors. Now its main weakness is getting overwhelmed by chaff and taking any kind of hit while you're charging or about to shoot will make it blast off into the stratosphere. The most important tip I have for this weapon and probably the most important thing in general for it is that you need really good movement, spacing, and positioning to make the most out of it. I always recommend light armor, but after using this with medium and heavy, I felt like I needed the light armor so that I could always be in the best position to shoot it. Otherwise, I would just get overwhelmed or not be able to make the space I needed to be able to charge it in time and remove what I needed to. This is also purely from a tier 9 Helldive perspective, that's really all I play, either solo or in groups. So my best solo tips are that you always need to have stun grenades on hand. Even in a group, the stun grenades are huge, so that way you can stop the chargers, hulks, and bile titans from coming in on you, and then you can set up the perfect shot on them. And in a group, you always want to play out in front to remove the heavy armor to patrol first, then fall back and clean the rest up with your team. Stunning packs in solo or group lets you keep situations under control, but when things do fall apart, as long as you keep the enemy armor in check, it'll give your team a lot of breathing room to remove everything else without panicking. And when people do start panicking, it causes death spirals, and that's when games start snowballing out of control. Now, something that doesn't get talked about a lot is how effective a weapon is at removing your fellow hell divers. Three, two, one, go! Oh, he started charging early. I missed. It, well, <laughs> I don't know if I my know. head spun off of my body! <laughs> he died. <laughs> So it's a one shot. As you can see, it'll take your head clean off if you're not wearing your shades. It also has a small blast and AOE damage if you're too close to the target and can ragdoll you, so you just need to be careful for that. It also penetrates to a certain level, letting you blow off multiple pieces of chargers in some cases, but I haven't been able to blow off two pieces of a bile titan yet. But on the charger topic, it's a good time to break down how it plays against the terminus. The Quasar Cannon is easily an S tier weapon against them. The spam armor that gets thrown at you gets caseed so fast you'd think the biggest streamer was just banning them off your screen. The chargers only take one shot to the head to remove, and this can be done from quite a few different angles, but since they love running at you in a straight line, if you just stand your ground 50% of the time, 100% of the time, you'll blow his head and his back out before he can blow yours out. It also takes one shot to rip the leg armor off, so if you miss, you can just blast it with your primary, and in some cases, you can just instantly kill it by shooting it in the leg, but this was fairly inconsistent, and I also don't really see a point in shooting it in the butt at all, just because you would cause a death rattle on it, and there's no real point in that way. You can just kill it in one shot. Now, as for Bile Titans, they take two direct headshots to remove, but like Eats or Recoilses, they have to be well-placed, otherwise it takes three to four. But if you miss, one shot will rip the armor off its back, opening it up to be killed by the Scorcher or Impact Grenades, and as for the legs, I tried blasting it quite a few times. It didn't really get anywhere, so I'll assume this just isn't happening. The best part about the entire thing is when you get that lucky Impact Ragdoll and it just sends <laughs> whatever enemy you hit flying. That's probably my favorite part about the entire thing. Now, 
As for Shrieker Nests, they only take two shots irrelevant of distance to remove. I took this one out of 460 meters, and this is the farthest I could really get away from one, so I'm assuming that anywhere from 0 to 450 meters will always take two shots, and it also one-shots the regular Spore Towers. You can also remove bug holes with this thing, which means it opens your grenade slot up for that stun and ends up rounding out your kit perfectly to cover all this weapon's weaknesses. Now, if you blast anything below a charger, you'll just one-shot it and evaporate it, especially if you're feeling disrespectful. These scavengers have been asking for it for a while now. In general, I think the Quasar Cannon is probably my new favorite armor removal tool for the Terminids, and when we played the Quaso Quartet on stream, it was a ridiculous amount of fun to be able to blow out the map like that, and it really reminded me of every time we bring four eats. But... Moving on to the automatons, one of my favorite parts of the Queso Cannon was the ability to blow out dropships. I was doing this with Eats pretty regularly, but being able to remove some of the bots that are on dropships feels really good, but with the hover movement combined with smoke and laser fire, it makes them really hard to hit in a lot of cases. I'm just really happy they gave this the option to do that, because when you kill a dropship out of the sky, it's one of the most cinematic moments you can get in the entire game, and it just feels really good to do. You can also blow Hulk faceplates out in one shot. This can be extremely dangerous, though, and in the build section, I recommend stun grenades to help out with this. It also takes three shots for the armor if you miss the head, and surprisingly two to the heat sink. As for regular tanks, it takes two to the side or heat sink to blow them out, but three to the front mantle, and the big laser machine gun tanks take two shots to the side, or if you shoot them directly in the guns like you would with a normal rocket, it'll still take them out in those two shots. Turrets also work the same as normal tanks with two shots from the back or side, or three right through the front mantle again, and you can also blow up the bot fabricators with it too. You just can't destroy the eyes of Sauron or the jammers. As for rocket devastators, you can one-shot them, but peeking them with this thing can be very scary, and the shield guys are pretty much your hard counter. You can't really kill them effectively because the shield can eat two shots, so you're forced to headshot them, and there's a good chance they'll flinch or kill you by the time you get the shot off, so it's just better to use your primary for them. Now, the builds I have for the automatons and terminids are just based off the laser cannon wave motion build that we just made, but it's a lot more well-rounded now and feels a lot more balanced than it did before. And even though the laser guard dog likes to ruin every solo no-death run I take it to... It still covers your weaknesses and rounds the build out. Every time I watch that clip, it makes me so mad. But I also think you always want to take the cluster or ego strike so you don't get overran. If I didn't have cluster in the solo runs I did, it would have just been infinitely harder. And thematically, you can take the orbital laser cannon for big energy. It's just not great versus the bugs. But since you can remove all the armor so well, it ends up being pretty good against the small targets. It's just the three use limit feels bad when you're only killing like sub brood commanders with it. So I think just replacing this with 500 kg because it's cool or napalm for area denial would be just fine, but I think bringing a sentry turret to taunt things off of you for better positioning would probably be even better. And you guys probably know how much I love my sentry, so I'm hoping they add a laser one to make my energy builds even more thematic. Now the sickle and redeemer round out a lot of trash removal that strats can't cover, and the stun grenade combined with the plus two perk on the engineering light armor really made this build shine for me. It's a key part of being able to get the spacing you need to make the most out of the queso cannon's armor removal, but that light armor is a super credit rotation, so if you don't have it, any light armor works you just really need it for the movement and stamina regeneration. The same idea goes for the automaton build, but positioning versus them is even more important. When we look at the basic gear, it ends up being exactly the same, but here we always need to take things that remove a rocket and shield boys because they will overwhelm you, so the Scorcher ends up being really solid for this, but I still really like the sickle against the bots. And usually the orbital laser is the goat for resetting the screen, but whenever you have four stratagems against the bots, the cooldown is too long to make it worth it. Again, these are tier 9 hell dive build, so if you have 4 stratagems, you have 50% cooldown and 100% call in time, but on lower difficulties, it probably ends up being fine. I just really liked replacing this with Orbital Precision Strike because it feels really good at removing all those targets versus the bots. I also take the cluster all the time versus the automatons because of its massive area removal and the ability to break the pieces off of all the different devastators. So whenever the minus 1 modifier is in effect, I think my build will end up as cluster, queso, and shield. But in the future, whenever the bots stop shooting through walls, I'll probably stop using the shield again just because because I wasn't really relying on it in the first place until uh, they completely broke the bots. So for now, overall, I think the Queso Cannon is one of the most fun, thematic, and cool weapons in the entire game, and reminds me of how well the Auto Cannon is made. But I know a lot of people are saying it's the Omega Broken Super Meta. Oh my god, it changed everything in Sano mode. And I think when you look at things from a Tier 5 perspective, 
everything is overpowered in Sano mode, but I exclusively focus on how things feel in tier nine hell dives, and I don't think it's as Omega broken as most people are making it out to be. Don't get me wrong, it's really good, mainly because of the free backpack slot and infinite ammo, but I still think it's worth taking eats in a lot of cases. It's just when I compare it to the other rockets, it makes the recoils and spear feel mediocre because of their terrible ammo economy, and it just shows that they should buff that portion of them on ammo pickups. I think the theory is that at the cost of ammo or being consumable, they get to shoot instantly, but in the spear's case, it just gets none of that. The dev build version of this that they show in the preview when you hover over it is not the same as the live version. When you do pick up ammo, you only ever get one rocket back, and it takes anywhere from two to four to consistently kill a bile titan only one if you ever get lucky and that ends up feeling even more terrible because the lock-on is still extremely inconsistent so if any kind of balance does need to happen it's to fix the normal rocket launcher issues which is the ammo economy and to just overall fix the spear so that it works the way that they advertise it the big drawback for the queso cannon is the charge up time when you play on the hardest difficulty the raw amount of enemies tier nine throws at you doesn't just let you stand around and pop shots off the bots end up gun punching you into outer space every single time you take a hit from from a laser and that's if you don't get instantly killed by one of the 10,000 things flying at you and it forces you to invest a ton of stun grenades killing that entire resource from you just to be able to shoot back at them and the main thing versus the bugs that I've been reading everywhere is that people are struggling with hunters so the quasar cannon doesn't help with that at all but it is easily the best armor removal tool for the terminates right now if you build your entire kit around it and without stun grenades you really start feeling its weakness on the hardest difficulties and it really does just struggle against the boss without it so i don't think it's egregiously broken when you have to build everything around it especially when i think about the kind of bosses we'll have to fight in the future now i do have a feeling they will nerf it after seeing how they handled the railgun being overhyped but it's not like patch one where there was a bunch of stuff that just wasn't working correctly or was just flat out bad that's why i do want to give my opinion about balance on the quasar cannon if they nerf the damage or charge time it just becomes annoying to use versus the terminates and becomes essentially worthless versus the bots i know they said they wanted some weapons to be for certain things but i just don't see the point in making something irrelevant versus a faction for no reason it just removes player agency so if anything was to be nerfed with the queso cannon which i'm pretty sure this was supposed to be the case in the first place it should just be the heats and cooldown time being changed into a cool off time it's the only thing that wouldn't make the weapon feel like trash to use and it would make it more thematic in different climates like the other energy weapons meaning hot versus cold would have a drastic difference like it already does with the laser cannon, and it would give a chance to blow the heat sink out if you were just playing bad. I put a lot of work into trying to understand all of the weapons strategies in the game, so we'll be updating our balanced feedback form on stream again for the current patch, uh, probably fairly soon but most importantly i do want to know your guys favorite parts about the quasar cannon mine is the audio on it because it just makes it feel like i'm shooting like a star wars cannon but that's going to be all for now and i wish you guys the best luck out there